Mother's Day to all of you beautiful ladies today. So today, we have a very special uh, message hour as we spend some time together. I praise God that um, we get this chance to celebrate mothers. You know, Mother's Day is a little bit different than all the other holidays. Um, there's a lot of emotions behind Mother's Day, amen? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I am so blessed to have uh, an amazing mother. Um, I'm so blessed by so many women in my life. And Mother's Day is more than just uh, those sisters among us who have had children. But it's the brilliant design of God <laughs> giving us women, amen? If it wasn't for women, none of us would be here today, amen? So we're praising God that we're here today to share what God has done. Um, truly in Genesis, what God said, it's not good for man to be alone. In the midst of everything that was perfect, he saw something was missing, and it was you. Amen? So praise the Lord for that. And so I praise God for that. I praise God for my mother, uh, Blanca, my wife, Bianca, <laughs> and then, of course, uh, my beautiful daughter, Daniela. So I praise God for that. And so today we're going to have uh, an interview sermon type. So we're going to interview a new mother, Bianca. We're going to interview a seasoned mother, Sister Charlene. And then we're going to interview a young woman who has been mother or mentored, not quite a mother yet, uh, Sister Joy. Amen? Amen. And so we'll be gleaning from them and learning from them how God has uh, led them and blessed them. Amen? But before that, I wanted to share... Uh, I think one of the most beautiful outlines in Scripture uh, regarding women in Proverbs chapter 31, where it talks about the virtuous woman, the woman who fears the Lord. The Bible says, an excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. And with the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable her lamp does not go out at night. And she puts her hands to the, to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor. She reaches out her hand to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes up to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she, laugh, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. Amen? Man, what a beautiful outline in Scripture. In a time where I, I believe the, the beauty and the power of women is being faded away, right? But we live in a time where we should uplift our ladies, our sisters, and let them bask in the glory of what God has created for them. Amen? So today, um, I love that outline in Scripture, and today I wanted to begin our journey of learning from these ladies uh, with our newest mother, uh, sister, the beautiful... Bianca, <laughs> Pauline, Tello, come on up. <laughs> and so Bianca, you know, Bianca's very shy, as you guys know. So this was, 
I was, I just threw this idea out to her. I go, hey, I want to interview some ladies for Mother's Day, and you know, thinking about the different categories, and I threw it out there, never expecting she would say yes. Whoa. And so she, you know, little Oliver has brought out the boldness in her. And so, so come on up, honey, and take a seat. No prejudice there. I'll switch. There you go, buddy. Look at this guy. Look at this stud muffin. I'm talking about him, him. All right, buddy. All right. All right. Well, guys, is your mic on? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is little baby Oliver, and he is the newest addition here to Cambrian Park. Uh, so I know we have some other babies in the oven right now. Bacon. The set is uh, bacon, also a baby boy. So the church is growing. Amen. Amen. So why don't we begin with a word of prayer, and uh, we'll spend some time together. Father in heaven, we're so grateful. Uh, we're so thankful, Lord, for the, the amazing and the beautiful women in our lives. And we just pray, Lord, that we can take this time to, to learn, to grow uh, the beautiful lessons you give us in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so honey, you know, what, what, what were some of the fears you were wrestling with as you were waiting to become a new mom? You know, for me, I started out first as a stepmother, so there I kind of already had to kind of face judgments and uh, personal opinions of people and um, kind of endure the sometimes negative stigmas that come with being a stepmom. Um, and so because of just kind of having to experience that, I felt kind of this already anxiety of maybe any preconceived judgments or opinions that people might have as me becoming a biological mom for the first time. And so, um, you know, I thought that, you know, I would be really watched, kind of, and people would just, you know, kind of think, what am I doing, right or wrong, um, because I did experience that, I feel like, kind of in the past, and so that was probably one of the biggest things. Um, and then, for me, another thing um, in my professional um, part of my life, I felt that I may need to make a sacrifice or choose between being a fully present mother and raising or growing a family, um, or you know, having a successful um, career and continuing to build my career because it's something that I worked very hard for, um, and I'm kind of still in the beginning of building my career, and so. That was something that I was worried, you know, I won't be able to have 100% success in both areas of my life. Mm. You know, I think that's a real fear. Uh, for a lot of women, I think in general, our society, there's a lot of judgments, like preconceived ideas of, of what a woman should be like, uh, what a stepmom should be like, um, what a new mom should be like, what a pastor's wife uh, should be like, right? So she has all the darts coming at her. And so those are real fears, are they not? And I really appreciated how she mentioned, and I didn't really grasp this um, until we, we went through this together as a couple, of how when you have a professional wife, a spouse, how, that, how a child affects their career. Uh, you know, just, we don't really think about that. And the, the concept is, the main, the main thought in our society is this, is that the, the, the dad uh, works so the mom can be present but the dad is usually absent because he's working, right? Yeah. Almost he justifies being lazy at home because he's working all day, right? Yeah. And that's a wrong concept as well. And I feel that God doesn't prosper us, doesn't give us talents, doesn't give us these, these skills to be half committed, amen? I believe that you can be a fully 100% committed mother uh, and be 100% successful and also be successful in your career, yes or no? Just like a father should be successful in his career and also be a present successful father, yes or no? Right? It's not one or the other, it's, it's both. And God gives us that strength. And I, I love that about the, uh, the virtuous woman in Proverbs 31. You see that picture of a woman 
who's just not at home serving her husband as a slave. She's buying land. She's investing. She's working. She's, she is doing all these wonderful things. She's raising her family. And, and her life blesses all the lives of them, all the, all the lives of people around us. Amen. And so it's, it's a beautiful thing. Now, obviously, not to say that if uh, you're, you are not a professional mom, and you are ha you have the ability to stay home. That's a blessing as well as well. Amen. But there is that misconception that you can't be a good mom unless you're a hundred percent at home. And so I, I praise God that she wrestled with that and is overcoming a little bit of game here. So how has becoming a mother, a mother changed those fears, and how are you learning to conquer them and, and get over some of those things? So I guess kind of for the first fear around step, uh, being just a mother and those judgments, um, I realized that, you know, no matter if I'm the best at something or if I make mistakes like everybody else in the world, that I can't really avoid, um, you know, other people's opinions and judgments and things like that. Um, specifically those that, you know, don't really truly know me or haven't spent the time to get to know me and um, and I think that you know I know that I can only do what I feel is best and I feel that you know one thing to remember is just that I think only myself and my family can validate myself um, and how I am as a mother and truly truly know as well as I think at the end of the day there's only one person's like judgment who matters in the end so that's the Lord's amen and then mine, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, when I met Bianca, you know, uh, being a single father, seeing her interactions with my kids, Danielle and Jaden, uh, was, was very key for me. You know, I was like, you better learn, you better know how to cook, and, and you better be good to my kids. And she was just an amazing woman, and I fell in love with her really easily because of that. But seeing her go through the pregnancy with this little guy, Man, what a trooper. She, she made it look easy. Uh, I was actually hoping she'd struggle a little bit more to maybe second guess having more. But uh, no, she was like, oh, this is easy. I can do this again. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> so, we're going to have more little ones, more tellos coming out soon. So, praise the Lord for that. What's that? Yeah, so what, what, is, what is becoming a mother talking about that? Oh, um, well, back to the second one. I, I guess something I learned about the second fear and how to conquer that is um, kind of in the profession that I'm in, I'm you know continuing to see um, that the leadership, um, female leadership is kind of is growing in my field and one benefit from the pandemic that I've experienced is getting to work from home. So I was able to have a more, I'd say like intimate um, insight into my coworkers' lives. Um, I think for me, and kind of in my work, we're you know kind of keep things professional. Family's at home, work is work, so we don't really dive into that part of our lives. But I think that um, having to you know work from home, constant video conferencing, you've kind of had to put that wall down because you know kids are popping up on the screen, you hear families in the background, and so it's helped me realize that you know I'm not alone in kind of this fear and feeling that I had because. I'm seeing firsthand other women that are in the same demanding role or even above um, kind of be successful in both areas. So they are very present and attentive at home as a mother, just, you know, with their families. Um, but they're also succeeding and, you know, growing in their field and becoming um, strong leaders um, in my profession. So I feel like I've been able to see it firsthand. So just kind of remembering that. That here. Right, so, what, what is becoming a mother taught you about about God? Um, for me, I would say um, true understanding of what it means to be loved unconditionally and to love unconditionally. Um, I feel that you know. I think we try very much to to love unconditionally when it comes to partners, friends, and family, but I think um, there's always a sense of sometimes when someone 
does something out of their way um, for you or something nice, it makes you feel that much more appreciated or loved. Um, and therefore, I think in return, you fall deeper in love or your connection and relationship with those individuals becomes stronger because of something like that. Um, but for me, I feel that I've developed, um, or since becoming a mother, um, my child has loved me since the beginning of his existence. Um, I didn't do anything materialistic for him and nothing with strings attached, but simply just being his mother and he loves me just simply for that. And I think that I've been able to develop this deep love for my son, um, again, before his existence, and I'd say technically before he was you know, here and brought into this world and born, I was already developing this love for him and falling in love with him, and he hadn't simply done anything for me yet. So I felt that that gives me a better understanding um, you know, when we talk about how God loves us unconditionally, um, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, he's always going to love his children. Um, I feel that maybe just as human beings, we resonate more with real life experiences and examples, helps us better kind of understand these things. And so I feel like this experience in my life has really helped me to, I think, more truly understand uh, but more importantly, I think, to more truly believe that that's true, that God will love me no matter what, and he loves me no matter, I don't have to do anything for him to already have that love for me. Um, Amen. Beautiful lesson. What would you want other, what, what would you want women to know that, uh, that you've learned as becoming a mother? I think, I feel that when people say that there's a mother's instinct, I think, that you hear about all the time. Um, I feel that I am ex I've experienced and I'm experiencing that. Um, I feel that it is a tr real thing. I feel that God has truly equipped us with the proper tools to just be able to navigate those instincts. Um, I think, you know, as just, I think, just women in general, um, because not everybody is, you know, a mother. Sometimes you're a guardian, mother figure to people. But I think that we've been uh, built with, built with that instinct to be able to um, just know certain things and how to just have that compassion and things for people. Um, whether you know you have children, you're you know a guardian for someone, a mother figure in a way to somebody. Um, and so I think to just, you know, remember that when you feel unsure, you'll, you, it'll come. Um, there's not really a way to prepare. It's just something that we've been given and when it's time, I think that no. you, you'll have that experience. When in, in a society where it denies a creator God, uh, women are a daily reminder that this isn't just a cosmic, you know, happen chance. Women are specifically created by God uh, with that motherly instinct uh, and you know women you need to understand is that you're just not a non-male you are a special creation and there's no way that we could ever be like you amen, amen. Uh, God has given women uh, a heart and a mind that is completely different than a man's and I praise God for that so thank you, honey, for being our first interviewer today. How's it do, everyone? Yeah. 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 here. Take this little guy. Thank you, sweetie. And so now we have our sister, our OG mother, <laughs> Sister Charlene. <laughs> okay, I gave Charlene a call. I said, hey, Charlene, I'm looking for a, a mother who can come share some light. You know, at, in life, you learn as you go, amen? Uh, and I, I wanted to kind of get a, a, an overview uh, of the different experiences. Let me jump up here, Sister Charlene. And uh, so Charlene is going to share with us some of the insights she has gained in life and in, in, uh, raising her kids. So let's begin with there. How many children do you have, Charlene? I have two sons. Two sons, all right. And they are how old? 
42. All right, 45 and 42. Man, so I could be your son. Yeah, yeah. you could. Wow. Wow. I see you that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I feel that way. You know, you know? And that, again, that in itself is a, a trait of a mother, right? Uh, a, mo a, a, a mother will, will treat everyone as children. And that's a very beautiful thing. So, um, how has, um, uh, what, what different challenges did you face in raising two boys? Obviously, no two boys are the same, but no two people are the same. What, what challenges did you face there? It was really tough because my oldest was um, nervous. That's all right, that's all right. He was well versed and, and all around good kid. Okay. He, school came easy for him, like from kindergarten through his first year in college, and then he quit. My youngest son, on the other hand, was polar opposite. <laughs> Strong-headed, detested school. He was either kicked out of school or suspended, and I spent, since his fourth grade through the 11th grade, going to the three or four different schools to get him into school. And that in itself was really a challenge. And so I prayed to the Lord and said, I give you my kids. Mm. You know, I, I give it to you because I don't know what to do. I do what I think is right, but you know what's best. So I left it in his hands, in the hands of the uh, Holy Spirit. And as it turns out, fast forward to present day, by their own admission, um, they, they took away going through the Seventh-day Adventist structure, or a bubble that they call it, to have a mutual trait between the two of them. And there were two items that were really precious to them, and that was their strong belief in uh, there's a God. Mm. And they believe in the King James Version of the Bible. Amen. They, it had to be King James, because <laughs> they read so many different other translations. And the last thing was, um, their belief in prayer, how powerful prayer is for them. Mm -hmm. Because if, by admission of my youngest son, if his family, my parents and myself and my mother-in-law and her family, if they weren't behind them, my youngest son said he'd either be dead or in prison. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a shocker for me because it's just a shock. So now that they're, they each have their own um, respective jobs, it's good to see that my oldest son has experienced um, working with a co-worker who was living a really wretched life, you know, uh, drinking alcohol and, and drugs, and he had a 10-year-old son that he was raising. Well, this one day he didn't come to work, and the reason was because he was drunk and he landed in the hospital. So my son and several of his friends went to visit him and said, you know, you, got, you have a 10-year-old son you need to take care of. And it was from that day on and five years later that this man, his name is Richard, he became involved in plant-based health. Mm -hmm. And so he was helping my son because they worked on projects together. He was helping my son with his respiratory illnesses and all kinds of things that he was going through. And one day, Richard brought a book to him. And my son called me. He said, Mom, you brought me this book. And I thought my son was going to say it was a plant-based book that has remedies for all these ailments. And he said, it's the the Ministry of Healing by Ellen G. White. Wow. Wow. So my son said, I know that lady. <laughs> I grew up with her. Amen. And he told her that he was a seven day he grew up as a seven day Adventist, but decided to, to go the other way. And he said, Son, this is a very good book. You need to read it. And he said, Okay, wow. and he did take the book and he has been reading it. Wow. So that's a good thing. And then my youngest son, who <laughs> that kid has come so far ahead. He met a person and it was a good lady. And um, they had a very good relationship, but he told, she told him, you're not going to hang around my house and just do nothing. You're either going to cook or find a job or a clean house and be happy. <laughs> so he started looking for jobs, and he found that he really likes 
working. But his education was limited, so he took odds and ends of where he, wherever he could find. And she is a um, worker for a Toyota Corporation, so they moved from here in LA to, to Arizona, Chandler, Arizona. And since they've been there, he's gotten two jobs, and one of them was working in a metal foundry, and he, uh, he left that job because there was an explosion that he and another co-worker were involved in. So it, it affected him, and so he quit that job. And he went to, uh, went to look for another job, and it took him about three months because, before he could even have somebody look at his resume, which was very nothing. But he did, and then he called me and he said, Mom, I need you to pray earnestly. I'm looking for jobs, and I have these four on my list, and this is the last one that I'm going to go to that very day. And I said, okay, I'll pray for you, and I hung up. A few minutes later, maybe 15 to 20 minutes later, he laughed, and he said, Mom, you don't, you can't, you'll, you'll never know where I got a job from. And I said, where? And he said, it's an olive mill in Queen Creek, there, it's a town in Arizona. Uh -huh. And he said, Mom, it reminds me of the olive trees and this and that in the Bible. And I thought, oh, son, that sounds like a great deal. He said, the best thing is, is that it doesn't pay much, but I get along with every single one of my co-workers. There's five of them. And he told, he said the, the, um, the owner of the company said that when he interviewed Justin, that Justin said that he is a non, he is a non... Denominational? De, yeah, he's a non-practicing oh, Seventh-day non Adventist. Okay. And he believes in olive trees because the Bible had it. In wow. It. And See? His, his, his boss told me, he said that was, he said I hired him on the spot because he was so honest. And he's a great worker and all of this that he, his daughter's birthday was a few weeks ago. And the boss told me, he said he's the, one of the best workers he's ever had. He's mm -hmm. the part in this. So I came home um, from Arizona with four bottles, huge bottles of these um, different blends of olive oil to try in cooking. Mm -hmm. And my, my oldest son, I live with my oldest son, and he's the cook in our house. So, you know, leaving it to God was the best thing I ever did. You know, I, amen. I, I feel. I, I, as you're speaking, I can hear so many uh, things that I can relate to. Uh, my mother says, says, says the same thing about me. My middle brother, Howard, was very calm, very quiet, very obedient. And then I came along, and then uh, she learned to pray hard. And I feel that every single one of us is a result of a mother's prayer. Amen? And, and how beautiful it is to see, you know, as a young mother, I would imagine, you're just doing your best. Amen? Uh, and let's be honest, ladies, uh, there's a lot of things that you're learning on the go, right? Yep. And you're just holding on to God, and what a beautiful thing. It's a little bit nerve-wracking. I have a 19-year-old, a 16-year-old, and a 5-month-old. Uh, and my kids are not getting the age where they're now making their own decisions, right? And it's a little bit nerve-wracking for that, that experience. But to see how they, they came together. We're, we're, we're done with the Adventist Church, but we believe in the King James Version. And, and what was the other one? The King James Version? Prayer. And prayer. Yeah. And then your oldest son gets involved with health and gets brought a ministry of healing book. I mean, and then your other son also gets connected with a, a, an olive farm. Uh, and you know, it just, God never gives up on our families, what do you say? Um, and, and that is a beautiful testimony. I think that as mothers and fathers, and we, we, we worry so much. And when we worry, we forget who gave us these beautiful children. Amen? Who gave us all that we have and, and learning to trust in Him. And I agree with you. That's the best thing uh, that you have ever uh, were able to do. So what, what has managing this family taught you, Charlene, about God? That God is real. Amen. That's the first thing that came to mind. And that I trust him because I put the trust in him for these kids, and that prayer really works. Amen. 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 So, what would you want others to find hope 
uh, and motherhood and has speak to these, these mothers today here who are still raising children, Jackie, Evangeline, Bianca, I see. Uh, Richard, you said your name was? Ricardo, Ricardo and Tasha. Tasha. Uh, some other, uh, other mothers here today. And future mothers, what would you want them to know? Well, through my experience, I would say that um, pray to be a, a pillar of, of hope mm -hmm. in the lives of your children, knowing that the promptings of the Holy Spirit will be their best guide throughout going throughout this life here. Mm -hmm. This is a horrible life. Amen. Amen. It is a tough world. And praise God for godly mothers. What do you say? Amen. Thank you so much, Charlene. You did great. Amen. You know, Charlene is also a very shy person. And so, I'm glad you got So, Joy, come on up. Uh, Joy um, is our, our sister here who's going to share with us. Also, because you know, as you know, Mother's Day, you know, again, not just about mothers, but uh, there, are, there are many ladies out there who've never given birth to children, but have mothered. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, again, because God created us to be a blessing uh, as women to, to the world in which we live. And so, Joy, you being here, not, uh, no kids yet, you know, her and Nick are getting ready for their big day in October. Uh, so, uh, but that might be in the future. So, what is something that your mother or someone that mentored you uh, taught you that you still carry today? Huh, okay, this is a little bit sensitive for me. Okay. I might cry though. Alright. Okay, so, um, alright. Um, I'm trying to gather myself. <laughs> so, um, I was brought in um, first thing is that I never had a memory about my mom mm. and sorry um, I was two years old when she passed away mm. and um, eventually knows that um, I never really remember my mom's face. I never really, I never remember her how she carried me or like give love to me. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, um, he remarried after like few months to a um, stepmom, and like knowing Bianca as a stepmother, I wish like my mom, my stepmom was like that because my stepmom was very abusive mm -hmm. and. I grew up like not receiving any love from her and I was just always abused and my dad doesn't know that because I kept it myself mm -hmm. and like I learned to keep things to myself because I don't know how to um, be vulnerable about around mm -hmm. people and also like I didn't know how to express myself like, because my dad is always away to work, and my stepmom would always be there, and she would always, like, just because, she mm -hmm. would just, like, get a stick or something, because, just, just, to, just to be mean, and, and she would ask me to buy stuff from the store, and she would, like, spit underground, and she would ask me, like, if this spit would dry up, and you're not here, I'm gonna beat you up. Wow. And so I'm like, like, I always think, like, I never really had a solid foundation about what mom is mm -hmm. until like elementary days, like third grade, people go to like PTA, like they have their own mom, my dad can't go, and um, I was just so jealous, mm -hmm. I was full of jealousy that um, um, I, I tried to ask her like, why, why me, like why, why don't, like you, like have other people um, suffer, but then um, I realized one thing that um, I see how other moms care for their kids. Mm -hmm. I see how they love their kids, they like feed them and give time for them. And so, like until grade sixth grade, I was like, man, I'm like I never really. I always like blame God like how bad it is, but then I am surrounded with so many mothers mm -hmm. that 
um, they showed love and respect to me and like cousins and mm -hmm. my aunties, they're like, come over to our place and I see how they care their kids and so like that. And then, yeah, um, it was too late that my dad figured that I was all like been beat up, like I've been locked up to, um, to a room with two days without food because my stepmom was just so mean. She was like, I just don't like you here because I think she remind I reminded her with my mom how we love dad, my love, uh, uh, my my dad loved my mom, and so like every time we me and my dad would bond, she gets she gets jealous, and so she would just punish me for that, and until like. Um, yeah, elementary days, I thank Evangeline and Kriya Eno for like, um, planning to take me away from my stepmom. Mm -hmm. I thank God for that because if I stay there, I don't know where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I am blessed. And also now that um, instead of um, arguing with God and blaming Him for taking my mom, I thank Him for surrounding me with so many mother that um, um, help me and I see them how how they take care of their kids and you guys know I love kids mm -hmm. and so I developed that kind of uh, mentality to be thankful that it, instead of like um, being ungrateful that I don't have a mom I developed to be grateful that I have so many moms around here mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You know, it reminds me Jesus says this is how they will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another and you know the reality is in our society um, there are many broken homes a lot of families are struggling uh, like joy you don't have that that connection with your your mother uh, your mother was taken from you when you were young and boy oh boy i can't wait to see her in heaven and embrace you and to see the woman that you've become because um, you know uh, as a mother uh, those, those of you who are mothers or fathers or parents, you know, uh, as soon as that child comes into the world, that's all you think about, right? Uh, whether from the day they're born until your last breath. And I can almost guarantee you that your mother uh, was thinking and praying about you, for you, uh, even with her last breath. And she is going to embrace you, sister, when we get to heaven. Amen. She's going to be it's proud so, yeah. of the woman you've become. It's so funny because um, I, when I graduated college, I had a dream. I couldn't see a face, but I had a dream that I felt so loved that I was hugged like, with someone. And I felt like, was that my mom or something? Mm -hmm. But that was me. And then I, when I came here, Evangeline gave me my mom's King James Bible. Mm -hmm. and. There was like my picture when I was little. I'm like, oh my God, this is so great. And she kept it really wow. good. So I have it right now with me. I'm just remembering. I know my mom is very loving through people saying that my mom is loving and caring and how um, godly she is. So as as a young a young woman, I also started in, uh, in the nursing field. Um, what has what has this experience helped you as far as some of your goals in your life? Um, growing up also like taught me to trust God all the time because mm -hmm. God became a mother and father to me at the same time mm -hmm. because um, that is a very solid, no one can break that, mm -hmm. no one can break that. Your, your relationship with God is very um, personal. Mm -hmm. So I um, encourage everyone that to build that kind of um, relationship with God because God never fails you. He He disciplines you all the time and gives you lessons that, a lifetime lessons that you would carry all throughout your life until you have your own family. Amen. 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 Now do you see yourself having children one day? Yes, I do. All right. That was quick. <laughs> she was right in there. She said, yes, I do. <laughs> Well, that's great, you know. So, how many kids do you guys want to have? Well, we 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 had a talk about this. Um, God willing, we'll have. I wanted two, but three or 
I don't know, three or oops, something like that. Three steps. So, but, but God knows, God knows that. Amen. 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 All right, so today is a woman of God in 2022 uh, who is still building her life, still building her future family. Uh, what, would you, what would you like other women to know? Um, I want you all to remember not to be um, resentful. Mm -hmm. Say what you feel and say how you feel towards the people who care about you. Because uh, towards the end of the day, um, the things that you keep to yourself, it's going to break you. Mm -hmm. And Nick also um, taught me that you be open and be um, confident to um, say about how you feel and um, just um, be vulnerable to the mm -hmm. people. That's up to them if they judge you or not. So mm -hmm. be open and um, not be resentful. Say what you want and then also trust God as as always, because he, he never he never fails. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Joy, for sharing with us today. Amen. Thank you so much. I don't know about you folks, but uh, I learned a lot from these ladies today. How about you? Amen. You know, I, I think it's important to remember uh, that sin tends to make us makes makes us feel isolated, uh, as if no one else understands what we're going through. Um, and the beauty of the gospel is that it brings us together that it brings us together and in our diversity we discover how much alike we really are amen, amen. Um, it doesn't matter where you're from how old or how tall or whatever your skin color is it doesn't matter we all are in this battle um, together and as a church family uh, it, there's there's no accident behind why God outlined the church in a family setting, right? Created Adam and Eve in the garden. Um, he always, when he was here, he sat with his disciples and broke bread with them. Uh, he encouraged them to go two by two. So, I mean, those lessons, my mother taught me, everywhere you go, you go with your brother, right? You always care for each other. Family first, right? Always take care of each other. You're not always going to agree, amen? We're, all, we're always going to have these issues amongst us as family members. But we can all grow together. And we look forward to the day where we are all the, the great marriage supper of the Lamb. And we will literally see how God took interest in every single one of us. Um, especially as parents. And uh, we worry so much about our children. What they're going to become like. What they're going to learn. The good, the bad, the pretty, the ugly. Whatever life will bring. We just pray that they will find their way back to Jesus. When we get there, we'll be able to see uh, all the amazing things that God did for us that we can't see today, right? Now, I didn't get to ask you, uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure, Charlene, sometimes you look at your sons, uh, 42 or 45, and you say, wow, uh, how, how did they become the men they are, right? Um, especially when you see the goodness of God in them, uh, and you almost say, where did they get that from? They got that from you. Uh, they got that from you because God gave that to you to give to them. Amen? Uh, and so we're going to see all the beauties that God has given us. So this Mother's Day, I pray that all you mothers have a beautiful, beautiful day with your families. All you women, um, bask in the glory that you were made a woman. Amen? That God has created you in a very beautiful, specific way to bless this earth. Amen? And so by God's grace, uh, when we all get to heaven, uh, we will rejoice together as a family in God. Amen? So thank you again, ladies, for sharing with us today. Uh, Evangeline, thank you so much for the beautiful... Oh, yes. So we have flowers. So if we can have all the moms, please make your way up to the altar here. All the mommies... Uh, please come on up, ladies. Come on up. I think. Hey, she arrived. <laughs> and there's still brunch. 